Hi guys, welcome back to Paint with Josh. Today we did a 16 by 20 inch canvas. Beautiful galaxy, aurora borealis, mountains off in the distance, reflections in the water, two giant trees, a couple little scraggly bushes down around the bottom. It's fantastic. So you're obviously excited about painting this painting. That's why you clicked on the link. So check the description down below. Find all the colors you need. Make sure you get your canvas nice and wet. Get ready to throw some paint on it. We're going to do it just like this. See, all right, I'm going to show you the colors we have. A little bit of sap green, phthalo green, phthalo blue, lizard and crimson, midnight black, titanium white, Cad yellow, bright red, and dark sienna, which is the lighter color browns. We need to prime our black canvas with Bob Ross Liquid Clear. You guys can see that? Same old nasty jar, right? So we're gonna go right into our little jar. Don't wanna go too deep on the bristles though. You get too much on there and it is too much. Let some of it fall off, right? Drag it along the side. Now I like to put it kind of all over the canvas in different places, different blobs, right? Get all that liquid clear off of the brush and onto the canvas, and that way it's not all super thick in one place when you're trying to blend it all out, right? Drag it all down, drag it all down, drag it all down. We're gonna grab a couple paper towels, just like this. Now remember, I'm not talking to you guys that are watching live on Facebook, I'm talking to the people that are gonna watch the tutorial on Wednesday, to that video, right? So I'll go back and answer your questions and do all that stuff when we get done, but right now I'm focused on Wednesday's video. So we're gonna take this, we're gonna wipe it off. Okay, gonna wipe it off. You can see I've got some color from my, my easel down here, but the majority of the stuff that we wipe off is very much just a light gray kind of clear color. So now we're ready to go. All right, well, did we clean this brush? We did. Okay. Now we're gonna switch to one of our dark brushes. You can see it's much darker than the other one. That's because we're gonna use a lot of dark colors. So we might as well keep one brush sort of nice and white and, or, you know, nice, and the other one dark. So we have our three print, uh, transparent colors right here that we want to go into. I really have this cool idea. I want to show you a really cool color mixture you can do to create this wicked color. And uh, we're going to have this like galaxy type sky, maybe a little bit of like far off rolling hills, a little bit of water, trees on the side, bushes in the front. It's going to be nice and easy. So we need to plan for that. We need to lay down our, our base colors that when we go over it with white, they'll all show up, right? So where do we want to put stuff? Why don't we take our blue and pull it out and get it just like that on both sides of the two inch brush. Look at that, we're using the whole brush, right? Nice and blue, super blue. So let's come in from the top like that. We'll just mush that blue everywhere in this whole top quarter, right? The whole section just get blue in it. And we'll do it in sections like that. Okay, now down here in the opposite, I want to put more of that blue so they'll reflect as opposites, right? This is all planned out for a reason. You have to decide which, what you, you know, at least what you want the color to look like before we get started. That's about the only decision making we do is which color, right? Well, actually, let's go over to the side too. And then I have this really cool idea for the phthalo green about where we're going to place that. So I can, now I know it looks like we're not painting anything, right? To you, it may just look like a black canvas and I'm not really doing it, but I'm, I swear there's color on the brush. Hey, there we go. Why don't we go down here too? I'm just going to end up covering the whole canvas in blue. All right, so we got this whole thing and we might as well go here. So we've left basically this whole area, this arc of black, right? It's not been covered yet. Now let's go into our thalo green. Nice and thick, same brush. <clears throat> We're going to fill up the rest of this area with our thalo green and let it blend with that blue. Going to pull it out, right? The thicker you leave it on in certain areas, the brighter color of that green is going to show. So we're going to lay it on thick, right? Not so thick that it's, you know, stops our brush from moving. We have to spread it spread it into that arc that we made, move it out. And then once we hit it with our white paint, you're gonna see this just blast of color. Hey, okay, look at all that. Look at how much more of the green and how thick it is that we pulled out versus the blue. Let's add a little bit more blue, just so they're very, they're very bright, right? If you don't add a lot of blue, you'll get this dark blue when you add, when you hit your white. If you add a, a lot of blue color, you're gonna get a very bright blue when you touch it with your white. Very neat. Okay, let's wash off this thick, nasty brush. Look at that, it's got two different colors in it. See that? Amazing. Amazing, Josh. The amazing Josh. Okay, now we're gonna use yellow on a black canvas for the very first time. 
right through here. We're going to use that phthalo green base with the cad yellow. It's going to make the most amazing color you've ever seen. I'm telling you now, and it's going to be a cool back uh, drop color for our big trees that are going to sit in here. We're only going to have this little bit of galaxy in there, and then it's going to change all the blue on that side. It's going to be wicked cool. So we're going to take our little old fan brush, right? A master's touch size eight. I got this from Hobby Lobby like a year and a half ago. I still have it. It's very firm. It hasn't lost all of its bristles. It's nice. It's a great brush. Okay, we're gonna come in with our white, grab it up onto our brush just a little bit, about half like we, we normally do because we're gonna come in with this yellow too. Ooh, this is gonna be bright. Look at the brightness on that brush. My goodness. And once we go into this phthalo green with our little bit of white color too to brighten it up, ooh, it's gonna be cool, ready? We're gonna do our little, our cursive writing technique. We could start from the bottom and go down, or if you're left-handed, I guess you could write like Da Vinci and go backwards. So let's start up top. And just think of like a good, like seven letter word, right? In order for us to write. And it just me at least make that many letters, right? We're not really writing anything because I can never come up with a word to write. So let's do this. We'll just, oh my goodness, you guys. Look at this beautiful green yellow. Woo! My heckaroo. Look at that. It's going to turn into blue up there. It's going to give us this whole little wicked, like, oh my goodness. Just dumping little bits of color, little bits of stuff. Maybe it goes over here. Who knows? Whole crazy thing, right? Now we're going to take our dry one inch brush, smack it, get a little dry, right? Start to make circles just like this. Oh, counterclockwise circles, right? Or maybe we go clockwise. Depends on where you are in your cloud. I like going counterclockwise. For some reason, it's just more comfortable to me. And we can make all these cool little things. Look at that. Oh my, let me get out of your way. Look at this nonsense. That is a gorgeous bit of like galaxy color right there. Fantastic. Now, the only thing we could do is make it a little brighter, right? So we're gonna take a little bit of white, a little bit more yellow, a little bit more white, right there, mix them up. And maybe we come in and we have like this, I don't know, galaxial shape in here. All right, just a couple swipes, a couple things, a little bit of brightness, a little bit of something, because once we go back over, there we go, just gonna change it. It's gonna change it a little bit. We're gonna leave little light areas, little dark areas. Maybe we even take some white and we just chuck in a bit of white right in the middle. It's like a far off galaxy. Right, it's like that. Bam. You can make little oval shapes and, and, and kind of shape it however you want. Make it nice and soft. Whatever it is, it looks wicked cool. Wicked cool. What if we did a little bit of yellow in there? Just straight up yellow. Pull it down. Maybe it's the center of our galaxy back there. Shape it back to however you like it. Poof, get a cool little thing. Should we do like a little gamma ray burst? We could. I don't want it to be too yellow though. It's gotta be a different color. I almost grabbed up too much yellow. And what if we shot it out? Out the top. Just like that. That's pretty fantastic. Right? A little bit of light, a little bit of something. Just trying to make it soft is all. Working on our shapes, working on our angles. There we go. That's good enough for me. That is good enough for me. We're going to remember, we're going to have some trees that are going to cover over some of this too. So we have to end up popping these ones down a little bit. It's literally only there for color. Now we could do another little bit of a, maybe we go over there, it would be neat, but it might be too hard for people to get a little bit of blue, a little bit of white, mix it up just like that. And if we did one now, let's, let's see what it looks like when we do this. Kind of go through, dump it on, come back with our brush, pull it up, about as straight as we can get it, and pull it down the slightest bit just so the line isn't so hard. It's not so harsh, right? Just like that, a little bit of our uh, Aurora Borealis. Aurora Borealis. I want it to be a little bit brighter right in there, so we add just a little bit of line. 
And look at how it just brightens it up. Doesn't have to be perfect, right? We don't need it to be perfect. And that's why it looks cool when some of them come down in areas like that. Looks neat to me. Okay, we're gonna come back in. I'm gonna take up our little liquid white into our blue or green or whatever color you choose. Over into our white to brighten it up a little bit. And remember the liquid white is there just to keep it nice and thin so it comes off of our brush easily as we pop in millions of stars all over our sky, right? Some of these you might not even see. You may not see them, they may be too small. You can pop in a few into our far off galaxy back there. Maybe they're far away stars or planets or, or galaxies themselves. All right, a little bit more. Boop, 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 boop. Just like that. Very cool little sky, very simply and very easily done, right? Doesn't take a lot to make it look great. Just a little bit of color, a little bit of nonsense, a little bit of stars, a little bit of randomness. And we got to do one shooting star, right? Where are we going to make this guy? He's almost got to be like dead center here. <laughs> we'll make a big giant dot. Then we'll come back, decide his angle. Maybe he goes like that, right? And then you literally take him and swipe him. You get this cool little comet kind of flying off in the distance. Make sure you don't hit any other clouds on the way, though. Don't want to hit any clouds or any other stars along the way because... There we go. A little bit brighter at the front. Just a little bit brighter. This looks cool if it's a little soft, too. If you hit any other stars, you're going to make more shooting stars, right? So you don't want to do that. You just want to focus on one. One star. That's all, baby. That's all. Let's get a little bit more of that color down in here. It's just not enough backdrop color, right? Not enough. So we come back, just kind of blend those into those clouds, drag them up, see where it goes, see what happens, right? If you, I mean, if you like your galaxy so much, you could literally start your mountains way down here and just have the tip tops of your trees, depending on your sky, right? All depends on what you want it to look like. Doesn't care, it doesn't matter what mine looks like. I'm just showing you and giving you an idea on how to, you know, what colors I would use in order to make it look like that, right? You don't have to follow the, the video completely. It's not there just to copy. It's there so you can learn and, and come up with your own scenes, make cool little things on your own, right? Okay, let's bring in our little micro brush, right? It's actually a full size eight brush, but we let it, you know, the handle broke off and I'm so cheap, I can't throw it away. So we're gonna drag that into here. We're gonna make our little far off, like kind of misty mountains. They're not gonna be very big. They're almost gonna be like the smoky mountains that we did before, right? So we could like dab in a little bit, kind of off in the distance. Pull it down, kind of cover up all that dark, that lighter color. We're covering all that with this gray, this kind of purpley gray. Look at that, woo, it's starting to come together, guys. Pull over on this side. So we have a ridge, right? You can say the ridge goes down like that this cool little thing. And then if we pull over this way with these little J shapes, right? Paint with Josh and the J shapes and you get a cool little thing over here. Pull it out, very easy. Doesn't matter what yours looks like, remember. And all this is gonna be covered, at least up to these, you know, our galaxy right here. So don't worry about what the trees and the stuff look like back there. No big deal, man, no big deal. Okay, we're gonna take our brush and pull it over this way. Look, we're making C shapes now. So it almost gives it the effect of like this ridge. It's so bright over here, I can't even see. There we go. It's like a ridge going that way and then we can grab it and we can shape it this way and make it soft. Take all those colors and then pull them out from the top, right? We're only really worried about what the top line looks like. As long as that's back far enough, we can kind of create something over here to make it light enough and do all these things and everything we're working down. Down, down, down to Chinatown, right? Okay, we're going to take up a little bit more of that, and we need to come in and make a far away, like, shoreline. So we're going to mush it in, kind of cut off the bottom, cut off the bottom of our mountain. So up here, we got to go over here, right? We just need a bit of darkness down around the base. You see what I mean? Now we're very, very, very lightly going to go over that darkness so it doesn't blend. It stays dark. We need it to stay dark, right? And we need it to be at different levels throughout our mountain. That way this side looks like it's coming to a point because it's come down on this angle. There we go. It's all about millimeters and distance. 
I'm telling you, if you have your thing down here, just an inch, it's gonna look like this side is closer. It's not gonna be perspectively right. So millimeters play a big role. Okay, now we're gonna add, well, maybe we didn't even need to do it over here. We may not have. We need to add our water. We can even add a reflection of the sky above by taking some of that more of that white. We still have this green color down in here. We still have our yellow, right? We can do like a little sky deal over there. Maybe it goes all the way off the thing. We're not gonna worry about down here because we're gonna be covered with bushes. So we're only really worried about what's happening in there, right? Just kind of upside down and backwards and watch this. All right, we're pulling away. It's changing color because we're in the water, right? It's not gonna be a perfect reflection. Man, look at that. What is happening, guys? It's a mirror reflection at night, right? Okay, we're gonna take a little bit of the light again, a little bit of the yellow, see if we can't do this in one go. And it's not gonna be the same. It's gonna be opposite, right? So if yours is going down, turn it this way. Oh, I didn't put it over far enough. Josh, dang it. Should have been over here. Maybe we can get rid of that other bit. There we go. That's where it needs to be. Now, maybe we could work this other thing hard enough. Oh, yeah, see? Just get rid of it. Now we have our bit of reflection in our water. And again, this whole thing is going to be swiped over. We need a brush that doesn't have so much paint on it because we're too, too lazy to wash it. There we go. It's gonna be all swiped over side to side anyway, so it's gonna look like a you know a bit of reflective in the water. Now we need to come down, yeah, like that. All right, and that way it makes one of those shapes like a like a greater than, less than symbol. We're going greater than, less than, right? Same thing with this, except it's the opposite way. That, that way you know your reflections are gonna be right. All right, a little bit, just the littlest bit in there. That looks pretty cool. It's the upside down over here. Very lightly swiping it, trying to keep it straight. Just trying to make it as long as the other one is above, right? Swipe it over. We can always go back and add more. So just swipe it very lightly and watch it grow. Look at that. My goodness, guys. This one's turning out really, really cool. Okay, let's see if we can't get a little bit maybe of some uh, far off kind of shore reflection, a little bit of our liquid white, a little bit of our white and the blue, just kind of whatever. Mix it just so it's a little bit lighter than before. Little line off in our, in our thing. This is far off the water line back there. That's where the water is attaching itself, right? Just like that, okay? Now we're gonna take a brush. I'm gonna swipe down the smallest bit, the very smallest bit, right? Just to give us this kind of watery, sheer reflection. We don't want them to mix in. They don't need to mix in. Now we're gonna swipe it to the side, making it soft, taking all those brush strokes away, and now we have this little bit of reflection of the mountain into our water. We don't need it to reflect all the way. We want our water to stay dark and change and do all these things, right? I'm gonna swipe over on this guy very lightly, both directions so it stays sort of straight. We don't wanna change the angle, but we need it to be sort of blurry in that way. Poof, All right? We could get a reflection right here. Did that same thing with that white and blue. A little bit more blue, just like that. Okay, if this guy went down like this, this guy's gotta go like this. So we went over and then we went up and it was like that, right? And we may just have to save that. So we're gonna pull down, straight down though. Even though it's on an angle, you gotta pull straight down. Otherwise, it ain't gonna make any sense. Pull it up. Up from the bottom, straight up, just like that. Poof! Got a cool, wicked little reflection of our aurora, just like that. It's very, 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 very cool. Who else thinks that's cool? I mean, you could reflect your mountain in here if you wanted to, right? Say we dump a little bit more, watch it grow. All it is really is a little bit of color, right? And the more you have it grow like that, now it's reflecting the entire sky, the mountain, and everything. So let's go back in. We're gonna pop in a little, couple little stars. A little bit of stars. Liquid light into our blue, right? 
And these ones we can be sort of random with. They're not really making a perfect shape or a constellation or an even a perfect reflection. No one's gonna be like, uh, your stars don't really match, right? They sort of do. They sort of look like they do. And remember, you need a very little bit of liquid white because these will want to grow if you swipe on them. Like this guy got a little bit too big. I'm just gonna make him a little more messed up, right? These ones where we pushed a little bit too hard, they got a little bit too big or they're too, a little bit too wet. And if you swipe them, they're gonna go and make a line, right? You just kind of touch them a little bit. Just soften that area just a little. And that way, when we come back with our brush, look, they're not, they're not moving, right? If we did that up here with these guys, they would create shooting stars like this. But because we've softened them enough, they're not moving at all, which is fantastic. And again, we're not really pushing very hard either. And whatever you don't like around the bottom, you can cover with trees and bushes and all that stuff. But this looks so great. I might not even put any bushes and trees in there. Man, how long has this been going? This is fantastic. Fantastic. Look at that. Again, the only difference really is the color is not the same. But again, this is in the blue water or the black water. The black water. Man, I almost want to leave it like that, guys. Like, who says... Who says you need trees in a scene, right? Well, I mean, Josh says you gotta have foreground or at least mid ground. All we have is background right now. Our only foreground is this, you know, bit of reflection in the water. But look at these little swipes back and forth. It's fantastic. Fantastic, little ripples in the water, right? And if your brush, if you wanna cheat the system and your brush is a little bit damp from your thing and not a lot, I'm talking about a little bit, right? You can get it to drag that paint in the very smallest of lines, creating little teeny tiny ripples in your water. It's fantastic. It is fantastic. All right, let's decide. We've got all this paint. <clears throat> Excuse me. Horrible manners, horrible manners. Okay, we have all this paint. We might as well use it, right? And we could save it for Sunday seascapes, but we got it out. We might as well use it. Look at this. Look at that. It's like a... It like, ugh, I don't even know. That's a lot. It's a lot of paint on my tiny little knife, right? If that fell onto your carpet, you would be less than pleased. Okay, so let's keep our, our palette kind of flat. And we're just mixing up this th nice, thick, dark color. It's foul. It's gross. It all looks like a, just this black, purpley, super dark mix, right? And we can tell there's all sorts of different colors on there just from what it leaves on the knife. Now, the reason we need that is so we can make up these giant bits of tree along the side. And you can decide what you want your trees to look like. They don't have to look like mine. As we wash off the brush, right? You can do them saggy old sad trees or my uplifting beautiful trees or maybe a giant tree that comes in from top to bottom. Just a big old branchy arm comes out across. Ooh, guys, let's give me an idea. No, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that to you guys. All right, I know you're trying to follow some easy painting. So here's an easy painting for you, right? One little mountain, no forest, just a shoreline. Okay, now we're gonna do some big trees over here. We need to come up and we're gonna decide, actually, oh, it, looked, it just looks so beautiful. I, don't, I had an idea of doing like one bit of land, maybe saving a bit of like river, maybe turning the river back, but we're gonna lose all of the stuff, right? So why not? We'll just keep it like that. It looks really neat. I, love I hate doing like open water scenes because it's lazy. Like you, you didn't, you, you couldn't paint any foreground, didn't want to get to it, but it looks so beautiful right here. I mean, you could literally leave it like that. Okay, let's come up. We're going to do a couple. Why don't we do the shorter guy on this side, right? Just come down, decide where he lives. We don't want to cover up too much of the, the reflective galaxy. So maybe bring him down from galaxy to galaxy, right? That's at least what I did. Okay, now we're gonna load him up, a little bit more paint, come back in, turn on. I wish I could do it. I wonder if I could do it this way. This might keep the shadow away and be easier. Let's see what it looks like, All right? Couple little dabs. It doesn't look too dang bad, actually. I'm used to going with the right corner first, though. That's my dabbing corner. Okay, I'm just pushing it in, just covering all the sides. Coming down, skipping a little bit. Now all of a sudden we got this cool little tree hung out here. Everything's covered except for the very edges where you can see a little bit of water come in and stuff. 
but the middle especially. You gotta block out all the color behind it, okay? Now we're gonna come back in, grab up from that big, look at the size of it. It's like a, it's like a mountain of paint, but you need it. Like all, of, all that first whole bit got left on the canvas. And that's how you want it. You want it to be thick. You want to have those fingers sticking out, reaching for your highlight, right? This guy, maybe he's a bit taller and he's a bit over and he's going to grow a bit wider. So we need to put him a bit further over. Just like that. See, and we're going to load up the brush again. Because more than you think comes off when you do that. Okay, we're going to do it the normal way this time. Pushing up, leaving little bits, skipping down leaving little nasty areas, coming out with our branches, right? Starting to create a tree. That's why initially we put all that green color so we could have something for these to bounce off of, right? Beautiful little tutorial this is. All right, a couple little branches come out. Maybe we skip, we gotta cover over a little bit, but at least you know it's there, right? We know it's there, we painted it, we knew it. I come down now when I start my bushes and stuff, they'll stay below all of that, the rest of that, right? Yeah, cover it up, cover it up. Nice and thick. Don't want to have a big old nasty thick tree above and have it be very skinny at the bottom. So you got to kind of adjust and cover those areas. Looks really cool. And then we can blotch in a bunch of big splotches down here and be neat. Okay, let's take our our brown out, right? We got the brown out for a reason, so let's grab that up. And then again, look, so we have white, we have brown on top. Now we have black on top of that. Don't need it to be super bright brown. The white will make it a super bright brown. We need it to be a super dark brown, right? So we're adding a little bit more brown in there. Come back, scrape it up, come into where our little trunk is and just leave a little dab of it. Sometimes you can just literally touch it and pull away and it'll leave a little trail of trunk. All right, come back in, grab up some more, not in the same areas. Watch, we'll alternate areas. And that way, even if something gets covered, eventually you'll see a little bit of trunk down there. And that's all you need to see, maybe one or two of these in order to be like, ah, got it, that's a tree. I see what he did there, that's a tree. All right, let's highlight those guys. Wash off this brush, all that thick, nasty black paint off of it looks black to me let's get maybe we can't do them as bright as this otherwise they won't stand out so let's go into a little bit of that liquid white just a touch because we only have a little bit apparently we'll do our sap green and our phthalo green just kind of mix them onto the brush right here and then come up and very lightly touch whatever comes off comes off you're not going to see a whole lot of the of the green right it is nighttime Remember, the harder and harder you have to push means you're running out of paint. So you'll have to go back and get some more, right? There's a little bit of a tree as it goes into the shadow. You can only see really half of it. That's all you really need to see. A little bit. A little bit of it. Okay, come back in here. A little bit more. Come over to this guy. Again, we're trying not to cover up all of our little branches. Maybe only doing one side, cover up bits of our trunk. Don't have to make it, you know, the same all the way down. It doesn't have to be bright at the bottom. It can be very, very, very dark. Okay, now we need to come back. We already have our big pile mixed, our darkness, our pile right there. Now we're gonna come over here, grab our half round brush, the Bob Ross half round foliage, the smaller one. You could use the bigger one if you wanted. The bigger one is so dang big though. All right, heck, now look, I'm trying to, I'm hitting it and like sucking paint out of the pile and into the brush. So it's nice and goopy and globby. Okay, I'm gonna pull down a little bit now that it's nice and full and then we're gonna flip the brush over. So however you pull down, we're gonna rotate over and start going up, okay? Pop, just like that. Oh, look, look at all the little differences. Little things that come down, they pop out, they come down around the bottom. We have our beautiful little area of bush. Now, Again, like just with the mountains, all we're worried about is the top edge, right? So all I'm worried about is what the top edge of these bushes look like. And then everything else underneath, smush it in, cover it all up. We made this giant pile of paint. Might as well cover it, right? Make it nice and thick though. You gotta have those fingers that come off. So look, you can scoop it up. So it stays thick and goopy. And that goopiness is going to attract your highlights when you go to stick those on there. You're gonna have all these little goopy bits that are like, ooh, give me some of that. Man, 
That is cool. Right? But the more you smush, the more it's going to blend. So make sure you're just trying to drop bits of texture off and then you'll be able to see them from the sides. So what we need is the palette knife. There we go. Couldn't find it for a second. I'm going to grab up our thalo green, grab up some yellow down here, and just make this beautiful highlight color. Look at this thing. Watch, especially when we hit it with some white. Oh my goodness, it is gorgeous, okay? Now we're gonna come in with our same brush. I keep for losing everything, here we go. Now we're gonna go down, we're gonna tap again, right? Because all we need is a little bit of it on there. We're gonna rotate the brush over again and then just tap in these little areas, just pushing up, letting the canvas hit, letting the brush hit the canvas. Pop, 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 pop. Whatever comes off, comes off. Pop, pop, pop. Little things, right? Very cool. Again, come down, rotate, come up over here. You gotta leave dark areas though. Don't wanna get too bright down around the bottom. That's for certain, right? You gotta leave very dark, deep dark areas down here. Very dark. Very cool, Le little easy painting for you guys. Very simply done, just like that, right? Let's even take a little bit of liquid white into our brown. Let's see if we can't create like a little stick that comes up out of here. Just a little stick coming up out of the out of the deal. I need to have a little bit of darkness kind of underneath him. Gives him some depth, some shadow. See that? A little bit of depth and shadow. It just makes it stand out. Just that little extra bit. Okay, then we got some little white twigs in here holding up different things, right? In those dark areas, that's why you leave the dark areas. So you get cool little places for your, your little sticks to grow. Gotta have cool little places for the sticks. Ooh, these guys are a little bit more brown. I like that too. Let's mix those guys in. Cool little things happening, right? What is it? What's going on back there? What color are we gonna choose? More liquid white, back into our brown pile. All right, mix it up nice and thin. And maybe we got a couple more over here. Little things happening in the night where all the little critters live. All the little things happening. Got a cool little piece down there. A couple little branches come up. See how you're fast though? You gotta be fast with it. It makes it more random, makes it more like nature. If you're very quick and random with it. And then just don't care. Don't care. Doesn't matter what it looks like. We're not here worrying about what it looks like. We're here to make it look nice, right? Make it look real. And in nature, nothing is very, you know, pleasant. It's a bunch of jumbled up stuff on top of itself, right? Sticks fall on their, on themselves. Everything gets buried by leaves. It becomes dirt. You know, it's, a, it's just a whole big mess out there. So this one turned out really great, though. I really like it. See if we can't take the tip top of the tree, make it a little bit pointier. Just with the edge of the knife, you get that cool little uh, point on it. Man, just in case someone's looking. Now we're gonna add in our birds, a little family. All right, need a little bit of liquid white. Where are we gonna put them? What color are we gonna make them? We can make them like sort of off-white bluish. Just a little bit, a little bit off-white so they're not just pure standing out in the in the sun, right, or in the sky. There we go, they're flying over here. Just like that, flying through the sky. Love those little birds. Okay, down here we're gonna sign the signature and then we'll be done. And I can take Bailey to the park. Bam, just like that. All right guys, well, this one turned out fantastic as always. I wanna thank you guys for watching. Thank you for tuning in. And uh, until we see you guys on the next one, bye pow Hi guys, welcome back to Paint With Josh. Today we did a 16 by 12, why am I holding this paper towel? That's going to look good in the video. Hi, I'm just blowing my nose. All right, ready? Hi, guys. Welcome back to Paint with Josh. Today, we did a 16 by 20 inch can. This gorgeous, like, galaxy erupting. Oh, that's stupid. All right. <laughs> One more time. One more time. Here we go. Hi, guys. Welcome. No, I can't do that. I got to give it time. Wait, wait. Hi, guys. Welcome back to Paint with Josh. Today, we did a 16 by 20 inch canvas. 
beautiful galaxy off in the distance. We've got our auroras, our far off mountain, a little bit of reflection, this gorgeous reflection in the water. Even the stars reflect, the trees, little bushes in the front. Fantastic little easy painting for you to try. I know you're excited about painting this one. That's why you clicked on the link. So check the description down below. Fuck. Are you kidding me? I had the whole thing going and I, I, I ate it. I ate it. I ate it. Now I got to start over. Dang. All right, here we go. See, people love the bloopers. We have more and more people watching me bloop it up. Okay, here we go. One more time, final take. <laughs>